Hello, I'm JW. This is the first video in a series on electrical testing, um, specifically for electrical installations. Now, this mostly applies to the UK, although, of course, similar things may be used elsewhere, but uh, certainly this is really for the UK only. And in this video, we're just going to have a quick look at the order in which the tests are done, and of course, which ones are actually applicable, because not all of them are applicable to all installations. And uh, following on from this video, there will be individual videos covering each individual test and how that's actually done. And there's a link in the description to this video to an entire playlist which contains all of those in the correct order. And there's also a thing on the screen somewhere, depending on what device you're looking at, which has a link to the same thing. So if you're not watching this as part of the list, then certainly have a look there and uh, click on that. So uh, let's have a look at the actual tests which are done, and of course the order in which they are actually carried out. So just have a quick look at the uh, tests and the uh, order in which they are done. So uh, first on the agenda is continuity. And this is continuity of the protective conductor. And this really applies to the wires within each circuit, in which case uh, also known as the uh, earth wire. And this also covers the uh, main and supplementary bonding, if you have such things installed. And the point of this is just to make sure that it is actually continuous and connected in the correct places. And certainly in the terms of the circuit there, what you're actually testing is the CPC, or Circuit Protective Conductor. Again, just to make sure it's connected properly and to all of the points. Test number two is also continuity, but for ring final circuits. And this actually covers the line neutral and earth, both to make sure it's a ring and that they are connected in the correct place. Now one of these tests is definitely compulsory, so if you've got a ring circuit then uh, you're going to be using this one, and for all other circuits then you'll be doing the one at the top there. So uh, certainly one of those is compulsory, but of course you only do the ring final one in the event of having a ring final circuit, and of course most circuits are not those. Uh, test number three is insulation resistance. This is the one where you typically apply voltage of, say, 500 volts from a test device and check between uh, line, earth, and neutral. And, of course, you're looking there for the quality of the installation, make sure the cables haven't been damaged or there's no sort of defect anywhere. And, again, that's done uh, on all of the circuits, regardless of what type that they are. Uh, test number four is polarity. Now, of course, AC circuits don't have polarity in the terms of uh, negative and positive, but what you're really checking for here is that line and neutral are correctly connected. And again, this needs to be done on all circuits, regardless of what type they are. However, in terms of uh, polarity, it is actually possible to do the polarity test as part of either the continuity here at number one or continuity number two. So if you've done one of those by the most common methods, it's fairly likely you've already done this at that point there. But in any case, it does need to be done, and it needs to be done on all circuits. This test can be done dead, as in no power connected, or it actually can be done live once the power has been connected. So uh, this really marks the sort of division here between dead testing and live testing. I'd say in most cases you'll probably have done that as part of one of those, so individually it doesn't necessarily have to be done at that point. Test 5 is Earth Electrode. Now, of course, this only applies if you actually have one. Certainly the majority of new installations in the UK do not. That's only going to be really applicable if you have a TT type of supply. Essentially where you don't get an Earth from the electricity supplier. You just have to provide your own electrode in the ground. And, of course, that does need to be tested to make sure it's of suitable quality and it's actually been installed correctly. And again, there's a few ways that that can actually be tested, one of which does involve using the power that's already been connected. Moving on, we have impedance, or more correctly, the earth loop impedance, so confirming that the uh, supplier, or the, in other words, the electrode there, has the correct impedance. And for the external impedance, that's generally referred to as ZE, you also need to check the impedance of individual circuits to make sure that the devices will trip within the required time. That's generally given the symbol ZS. And at the same time here, you can actually check the prospective fault current. So in other words, the current would flow if, say, the supply was shorted out. And again, that's important in some installations, depending on what protective devices you have installed. 
Number seven is phase sequence. Now, rather obviously, this only applies if you have a three-phase supply. Because if you've only got one phase, well, you can't really have a sequence because there's only one of them. But certainly, if you've got a three-phase supply, you need to make sure that they actually go in the correct order. If not, then you've got things like three-phase motors attached. If it's in the wrong order, you'll have motors turning backwards, which generally causes expensive and probably irreversible damage to whatever the equipment was. So only applicable for three-phase supplies, but again, if you've got one, it certainly is necessary. And number eight, RCDs. And again, it only applies if you've actually got one or more RCDs, but uh, given the current regulations, a considerable majority of circuits do now require them. So again, you will need to do the test on those devices. And finally, number nine, is functional testing. And this basically means you're going to have to go around the building and make sure things like lights do actually turn on and off from the switches that they're being controlled by. Any kind of fixed equipment, such as uh, water heaters or emotional heaters or whatever, get to make sure that it does actually switch on and off and work as expected. And certainly it's worth doing, say, any socket outlets, for example, to say test one on each circuit to make sure that it does actually power things in the way you would expect. And a handy way there is just get a kettle and plug it in and make a cup of tea there. But uh, certainly you need to make sure that all the stuff uh, turned on and off as expected because uh, it's not unheard of for things like switches to be defective even if they're brand new. And of course uh, that would be completely useless if the occupiers then sort of moved into the building and found that they couldn't turn the lights on. So that's actually the complete list of tests there. Some of these of course only apply to some installations but uh, most of them actually do need to be done on all installations. And uh, certainly in the uh, order of tests, uh, certainly at the top here, they do need to be done in the order specified, because otherwise uh, one problem here could actually invalidate some of the other tests that you've already done. And again, the tests at the top here are always done as dead tests. In other words, the power isn't connected. And in terms of a new installation, the power wouldn't have even been anywhere near it yet. And once you get to this point, then you're doing them live, because obviously you can't actually do these tests here until the power is actually on the system that you've installed. And if you thought that you could just bang the power on and hope it's going to work, well, think again, because uh, if there's certain faults up here, you could actually result in a very big bang or dangerous uh, voltages appearing on exposed metalwork or things setting on fire. So uh, hence why it's divided into dead tests first and live tests once you've at least confirmed the basics are correct. So that's just a quick look there at the order and type of tests which are done. And again, some of those may not apply depending on your particular installation. And as I said at the beginning of this video, there is a link in the description to this uh, with the full playlist of all of the videos that cover those individual tests in detail. So I didn't actually uh, get any of those or some of those. Not a problem because there's a video for each one of those linked in the video description. So until next time, thanks for watching.